So when I've done production electrician work, I've always found the paperwork to be the most laborious part of the job. Uh, it's not that I don't like doing it, but what's always frustrating for me is when there's a change. Uh, you can create all your paperwork, like do your plan, get it all very nice. LD gives you, you know, all the channel numbers. You can create a beautiful spreadsheet and then things start to change. And my OCD goes a little bit crazy when I have to think about all the different things I have to update to keep the spreadsheet up to date compared to the plan and compared to the lighting desk and the patch. Some programs uh, are excellent for doing paperwork. Lightwrite is a brilliant tool. It works really nicely with Vectorworks. With WYSIWYG, they've integrated all of those tools into one package. So uh, you have the CAD mode and the data mode. And whatever you do in the CAD mode automatically assimilates data mode. So you can see all your patch information in there. Uh, and anything you change in one will affect the other. So you can update gobos, you can update your, um, your, your channel numbers and patch numbers and things in data mode. Now, it's a, if you have a very big project with hundreds or maybe even thousands of lights in it, this can be a really uh, slow process to build all your database uh, in the data mode. But I have some nice little tips and tricks for you that will help uh, make it quicker for you. We're going to cover data mode in more detail in our later chapters. Uh, again, just like the CAD mode, this will just give you an introduction, like an overview of how data mode works, how it integrates to the CAD mode, and um, it might just be enough to get you started on it with to deep dive later on. Okay, we're into lesson 10 now. We're going to look at data mode. So uh, I've got one light on this pipe, and I'm going to just add a source 4 as well, just so I've got something to show you. Um, I'm going to close that dialog box. We don't need to know that message. Finish placing fixtures. So I've got two lights. Now, if I go to data mode, we can see there's a spreadsheet and it's based on a very old version of Excel. And in here we can start to edit the lights. So we can apply a channel to it, so we can call that channel one. That's our source form. Um, Mac will be channel two. We can give it a patch. I'm not gonna do this yet because I'm gonna cover this in detail later. Um, but we can uh, change uh, the lens type of the source form, change it to 26 degree. We can give it a label, what's it meant to be doing? It's a uh, front of house watch. And you scroll across, you can start to see just how many things there are that we can we can edit. Now some of them aren't editable in this mode. Uh, for instance, you know, the XYZ position, that's locked because that's where it actually is on the bar. So that's kind of useful information if you want to extract it, but we don't, we don't need to edit that in here. Now down the left here now, favorites views, there's lots of different types of uh, spreadsheet modes. So you might just want to limit it to channels. So it's got rid of loads of other stuff we don't need. It's just put it all in this nice order. So channels, patch, dimmer position, monitor purpose. So you can see all your front of house washes will be together. So you can see more than one place. Um, this, is, this is a really useful feature, but when we come to the presentation mode, you'll see that this actually is how we create reports and it's much more useful in there. Um, in data mode, I tend to leave it on all data just so I can see everything. But I have to explain what's going on down here. Now, instead of having quad views and, uh, <clears throat> and the, other, the other views, uh, the shader view that we have in CAD, we have H select and V select. These are the same. Uh, I'll show you what they are. The idea is that you have a CAD view on top and underneath you have your patch view. So if I select something in the, in the table, it highlights that light and vice versa. If I highlight a light, it opens it up in the spreadsheet. This is quite handy when you've got hundreds of lights, it's really easy to see what you're doing. You can sort of select a group of lights and you can see where they are. And you can catch one if maybe it's missing a channel number, for instance. V selects exactly the same, but it's the other direction. So you've got a vertical rather than horizontal. But I want to talk about patch. This is a really interesting window and I quite like this. So what we're seeing here is we kept our horizontal view, it does that automatically. This represents a universe. So I've got 512 addresses and it's automatically built four universes for me. DMXA, DMXB, DMXC, DMXD. There's nothing in here at the moment, but let's say, we go back to DMXA, I want to patch this light. Now I'm gonna show you, as I said before, a lot of detail how to patch lights, but just to demonstrate how brilliant this tool is, I can click and drag that fixture onto the table and it will automatically patch it for me. And it shows me that shutter, that's dimmer, that's a sign, magenta and yellow flags. Now what you'll see, if you had a lighting desk connected to this, a little number would appear up here, which is the hard uh, DMX value coming out of that lighting desk. So it might say zero for shutter and dimmer, but the pan and tilt, which is over here on the Mac Viper, um, should say something like 128, because that will be home 
So if it's pointing straight down, that should be 128, 128, 128, 128. Uh, and the same goes for you know, go wheels and color wheels. There'll be some sort of value in there because n nothing ever just sits at zero. Um, that's assuming, of course, you've actually patched this light in correctly on your desk. Uh, but it's a good way of checking that you've got data coming from the lighting desk because if you've got no numbers like this, it means nothing's happening, there's no data. If you have lots of zeros, it means that you have data coming from your desk but nothing's patched. Or maybe you haven't configured the universe correctly in, uh, in live mode, so I'll show you that later. Um, likewise, if I right click on here, go to properties, patch, I can sign here to DMXA, address 36. I'm choosing that because 36 is free down there. When I click apply, the light appears there and it says dimmer spot zero CE source four. So we haven't named, named, given a channel number yet or name, so they're both called spot zero. So this is a really useful window. I really like this window. You can also build universes in here by right clicking. Right click, new patch, and you can create a new universe. Right, so if it's a DMX universe, let's call it uh, one. And I'll talk about more universes later. The error screen is quite handy. Um, I never have to go to it because the error messages will actually pop up when you load WYSIWYG. So it'll tell you just you know things that have gone wrong when you've been building your building your rig. So let's just say I change this guy's patch to two. I know that's going to clash with that Mac Viper. Uh, in fact, I need to give it a channel number. Let's just call it channel one, and I'm going to call. Mac Viper channel one as well. No, it's not going to do it. Let's try adding spot as well. And while we're at it, let's just do demo. Let's call everything spot one, spot one, spot one, and make that spot one. Okay, and then same for this one. And what happens if it detects a clash? It will, um, it will give you a little message just saying that it's impossible for you to have the patch that you've got there. Oh, it's not doing it. That's annoying. There we go. Missing a position. So there's, a, there's an error. That's a different error. Missing circuit name. Missing circuits. So if you've got a, if you've got a patch not working or something clashes, it will appear in here and it will give you a little message. Okay, and that is the end of our training video 10 for data mode.